Hmm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Lord of the Rings. We're going to be redoing Journey along the Anduin, because it's come to my attention that there was a couple of errata mistakes. Basically, it has been many years since I played this game, and it turned out there was some pretty heavy errata that I forgot about, namely from a card called Horn of Gondor, which I think I've actually still got in this deck. Yeah, so Horn of Gondor, it says, attached to a hero, after a character leaves play, add one resource to the hero's pool. Now, this is actually a pretty cool card, very strong in my opinion, but the problem with it is that they introduced a new tribe in, I think it was the Ringmaker Cycle, which is all about characters going in and out of play. So the Horn of Gondor was kind of like a catch-up mechanic that gave you something when you lost something. But I don't think it was ever really designed to be a true resource engine. It's just kind of like, a, oh, here's a little something, something. But because of the new tribe, it's like a type of Sylvian card that, that came in. And all the Sylvian cards of this tribe, are, they when they bounce in and out of play, they give you bonuses. Like, you know, when they come in, they do something. When they leave, they do something. Kind of like the Descendant of Thorondor. And the thing is, that made a entire type of deck archetype for Lord of the Rings, which were which are actual bounce decks, like legitimate bounce decks. And of course, with Horn of Gondor, it would generate ridiculous amounts of resources. So they changed this to say that the characters need to be physically destroyed. Now, what that basically means is that the last video I did for Journey Down the Anduin is pretty invalid because I used Horn of Gondor extensively. So I'm going to play it again, basically. And this, to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm using a different deck. This is an earlier edition of the deck in the other video. So this is what, this is where the deck in the, I think the deck in the other video is actually a more powerful deck. It's much better at this quest. This one, for example, cannot do turn one kills of the troll, but the other one can quite easily. And this one has a lot less questing power, but they're still pretty, this deck is still pretty good and fun. Uh, so I'm going to include it as well as the other deck. So when you go to the, the Mirkwood cycle cards, you'll see, you know, you've got the three quests from the Merc from the core set. The journey down the Anduin, you'll have the you'll have the Falconer's Duck Hunt, which is the the uh, the other decks, but you'll also have uh, this one here, which is yet unnamed. Oh no, I'm calling it Hook Then Quest because, uh, like I said, I'm taking the names people give on the on the website. But yeah, this is weaker, so just be warned. This won't be as uh, easy, I guess. Anyway, so first thing you need to do is set the first player and choose our starting hand. We've got a very good starting hand here. We do have fast hitch. We've got songs of travel. We've got unexpected courages. We've got one drops. We've got uh, a tracker out, which is huge. And we've got our threat reduction. So we're definitely going to keep that. Over here, we have support of the eagles. We have a proper big eagle, but we don't really have what we want. So we're actually going to take this mulligan and hopefully we're looking for a vassal, the wind lord. You blammo. Okay, we don't get one, but we do get a faint, which is just as good. Excellent, so that's actually a pretty good hand. So we're ready to go, let's set up the quest. Oops, hit the setup button, big button. Yeah, blam. And we just draw two cards. Oh! Okay, well that went very, very well. We still need to shuffle. So this basically says, each player reveals one card from the top of the encounter deck and it adds it to the staging area. And then the second uh, piece says, search the encounter deck for a hill troll if one is not already in play, shuffle the encounter deck. So we'll just shuffle the encounter deck. 
And this is a good example of how random this setup can be. The best setup for this game is to draw two uh, treacheries that whiff and go into the discard pile and then put the, the troll out. But sometimes you can have, you know, because of surge and stuff, you can get a whole bunch of cards. So this is a pretty good opening setup. I mean, we do have the nasty goblin sniper, but he is pretty easy to deal with because of done here. Okay, so, emerging from Mirkwood Forest with an urgent message for Lady Galadriel, you must now make your way south along the Aldian River in order to reach the Forest of Lorien. As you leave the forest behind, you notice that you are being pursued, and thus quicken your pace. Okay, so this is 8 to pass. As you approach the location of a small raft stashed on the riverbank, a fearsome hill troll emerges from behind a grouping of rocks and attacks. Okay, so thematically, we've left the forest, we're running down to the down to the river and we're being chased by some uh, archers and then we have to fight this big hill troll. So let's get straight into it, starting with our first player. First we need to draw cards. Oh, look at that. Song of Kiongs. Very, very handy. Okay, so what we're going to do here is... What did this guy get? Okay, nothing really of interest over there. So he's going to go one and place out this bloke. Actually, I think he's going to go one and place out Fast Hitch instead. Oh, and by the way, I've got a uh, Bilbo, which means I get to draw a second card every time, which is very handy. Okay. Now, Bilbo, a lot of people dislike Bilbo, but I actually think he's one of the strongest cards in the game, uh, in the early game anyway. Drawing additional cards is just awesome. And it should be noted that it's actually only the first player that draws the additional card. I've got to keep a memory on that because I play mainly solo, so I'm, I keep drawing a, two cards for this deck, but it's actually the other deck as well. So, we are going to quest with this guy and her. We are also going to quest with Thalen, of course. And we're going to spend two resources to place out our Winged Guardian. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that calculates as... Six will, your blammo. Each player raises step by one for each character not currently committed to the quest. So this person goes up by one, and this person goes up by three. One, two, three. This deck is much more susceptible to treacheries than the other one. Okay, and we're beating the quest by two points. One, two. Nice start. This is the banks of an Anduin, so we're actually going to quest there, may as well. And then this guy will come down, optionally engaged. And let's defend with Gimli. And once again, just like the other deck, this is a possible one-shot kill. The difference is this deck does have Hasty Stroke in it, which is a card that allows you to cancel shadow cards. So it's a little bit more protected than the other deck, actually. Still, there's no plus damage, so Gimli survives, but he does get four wounds. And of course, that translates as six attack. Nice. And then we use Dun here to attack into the staging area and kill this guy. So that's a pretty good opening start. We draw. And, of course, this guy draws a second card because of Bilbo. Okay, so I'm now going to go one, two, three, four, and place out Eagles of the Misty Mountain, which is a card we haven't seen in the videos yet. This is a really strong card for Eagle decks, and you'll see this in action. I'll talk about it when it goes off. Noise. Then over here, we are going to go, oh, look, we do have a Song of Kings. That's very nice. 
We do not have the Song of Battle yet. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and place out the uh, Northern Tracker. And I'm also going to go one and place out Hemamath. Now Hemamath is an unusual card because he's kind of useless in multiplayer. In single player, he is super strong because you can completely control the encounter deck with him. But in single player, or in doubles or more, because you're drawing so many cards in the encounter deck, he's not quite as strong. But he's actually, but for a one cost, one one uh, will, one attack, he's actually pretty good. So we're going to quest with all those guys. And that is going to give us seven quests. So I don't think we're going to quest with anybody else. Let's uh, actually... Yeah, so we are. So let's go Tang, five. That's really annoying. And your blam. Remove four progress tokens from the current quest. There's only two progress tokens, so they all get removed. Still, that could have been worse. These fives are really annoying. But we put two progress tokens down. You'll note that I did not quest with Thalen. This guy gets a shadow card. We are going to defend with this bloke, flip him over, gets plus one attack. So this guy is attacking for seven. This guy is defending at four with one health, so he has a total of five. Now the troll has a special ability that says you gain threat with the overspill damage. So because he's attacking with seven, and this guy has a total of five points, four in defense, one in health, means our threat goes up by two, which is bad. And this guy is destroyed, which means Horn of Gondor would actually trigger. But the important bit is this guy, Eagles of the Misty Mountain. It says, after an eagle character leaves play, which includes being destroyed, you may attach the card face down to the Eagles of Misty Mountains. So this actually gets attached like so. I'll just uh, set this up so it's nice and neat. And for every attachment attached in this way, you get an extra defense and attack. So he now has three attack and three defense because he starts with two of everything. So we've now got three attack. So we're going to attack for three, six, twelve. And we need 12 to kill. So we actually could have quested with Thalen. I wanted Thalen up in case we drew more monsters. But yeah, so that's 3, 6, 12. And this guy takes 12 to kill, which means he is instantly killed. We chuck him in the victory display. And because of Legolas' ability, we get to place two progress tokens. So that is 1, 2. And this is cleared. Now, the cool thing about this is that when it leaves play, it actually goes to the top of the encounter deck. So we know that one of the cards next turn would be fine. So if I did my, if I was thinking more clearly, I would have left Hanamath up and quested with Thalen. And then I could have scoured the deck to see the card underneath that one and then attacked back. And then I'd know both the cards coming out. So that was a bit of a miscalculation. Okay, bam and your blam. And of course, first player draws another card because of Bilbo. And unfortunately, I probably should have, uh, I don't have enough to cast my uh, greeting yet. So what are we going to do here? There's three. So I think I'm going to spend one resource off you and place out Song of Spirit. That gives him a spirit resource on Bilbo. Question is, I think I'm going to go one, two and place out a condition attachment onto Dunn here. Then over this side, let's uh, spend one resource 
and place out a horn of Gondior. And we're going to stick that on Thalen. Now, basically what we want to do now is place seven tokens on here. So if I quest with everyone, quest, 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 and quest. That gives me a total of nine. Or a total of 14 with nine covering. And I think that's going to be enough. Now this is risky because if we draw a Necromancer's Pass, we will actually kind of lose the game because we'll, Gimli will be dead. Because he's actually got four wounds. Did I not give him wounds? Oh yeah, there they are. So as long as we don't have a Necromancer's Pass, we will be ready to go. Come on. Bam. <clears throat> and you blam. Beautiful. But we do get another Brownlands. That is horrible. But of course, we have Northern Tracker, which places one token here, which is enough to beat the brown land. So this gets discarded. And we have a total of eight, plus one is nine. So we've beaten the first thing, because we only need eight to pass. And we've killed the Hill Troll. So we're out. So we've beaten it down to the path, and we've jumped on the boat. After defeating the Troll, you are able to board the raft and embark on the River Voyage. As you depart, your enemies pursue, harassing the small vessel as you attempt to navigate the river. As your enemies harass the raft, it is difficult to maintain balance and effectively fight them off. Reveal one additional card from the encounter deck per quest phase and do not make engagement checks, which is the important bit. So now we don't have to worry about engagements at all. And we are going to travel to the brown lands and it has a forced response. It automatically gets discarded. You blam. Okay, so we just load our stuff up and there's a bug in my uh, mod here. As I said, my mod is work in progress. So basically when I do the refresh, it's flipping over cards that are put face down. So I'm gonna have to change that. So I'll just put the tokens on there for now. Okay, and the first player draws an extra card because of Bilbo. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and now we're just going to go one, two, three, four, and we're going to place out a health bucket on Bilbo. That's going to make him a lot safer. So Bilbo now has tons of health. Because he starts with two and he's now got four, which gives him a total of six. Okay, so questity, 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 questity. I will not quest with him because he's only got four wounds. I probably should have put the. Uh, a health bucket on this guy so he could then start questing I'll do that next turn I do have a second health bucket here and I'm gonna leave this guy up okay so let's calculate that questing that's seven questing we get one progress token from the tracker and draw and draw and draw Okay, so this guy here has one health, right? And he has Surge, but Thalen, the god, actually has this amazing ability, which is very unique among the entire game because it's actually outside the timing structure. And it actually triggers before keywords. So Surge doesn't even happen. So this guy is just instantly killed. Oh, and this has a little thing that says, when defeated, it goes back into the deck rather than discarded. Okay, so that's plus four. One, two, three, four. And the East Blight is up. When faced with an option to travel, you must travel to the East Blight, which is really annoying because it adds six progress to our quest. 
going to really slow us down. And then we'll attack into the staging area. And he attacks for two into the staging area, but when he does so, he gets plus one. So it's actually attacking for three. And this guy has one wound. Remember, he's got one wound from Thalen, and then he gets another two wounds from uh, Dun here. Now we can untap him, but there's a rule in this game that you cannot attack the same mob twice with the same character. So you cannot then attack the same guy again. Okay, let's draw. And we get an extra card, of course, because of Bilbo. We've got all our threat reduction, which we really want to start using. So we're going to go one, two, three, and threat reduce by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think I'm going to go one, two, three, and do another threat reduction. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, questing once again, your blammo. Oops, not him. Over this side, let's go one, two, <clears throat> place out you. And we'll go one and place out you. Hey, what happened here? I've still got faint in my hand. How did I kill the troll? Oh, that's right. I killed... Uh... No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. I killed this guy. Right, yeah. So he attacked... Yeah, he attacked Gimli and then he attacked this guy. Okay, so I know what's going on now. Sorry, I confused myself why I still had faint. Okay. So, yeah, we're just sitting like that for now. And questing with Thalen, obviously. Okay, so 10 quests. So that's one, two, three. Reveal X additional cards. One, two. Wow. So this one basically says reveal an X additional cards for the players. That, uh, Wow, that's uh, pretty strong. So that goes away. This one gets a token. And we are actually plus three, which is nothing we can do about. So let's go one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of mass cleaning. We are going to draw this guy down here and he's going to attack I'm going to defend with this bloke he gets two cards because he has this ability that says you gain an additional card so he's attacking for three this does nothing and this one gives him plus one attack so he's attacking for four and we're defending with this guy and we're not going to pay the fee, but we're going to actually let it go into the discard pile. We could do two things here. We could pay the cost because we have one spare resource and keep him on the table, or we could actually attach him over here and add another damage to this guy, but we're not going to. We're going to go straight to the discard pile down here. Then we're going to attack for three, six, and that's enough to kill this guy. And of course, Legolas's ability allows us to drop two tokens. Now, because we fought with this guy, he also gets discarded. So he is actually going to go down here like so. I think now that that's actually a deck, the mod won't error. And we get another attack and another defense. So this guy is already starting to really beef up at 4-4, four, four, which is exactly what I like to see. And then I'll set this up the way I like it. I don't think that's going to flip up now. Okay, and then we're going to attack twice into the staging area for three, because remember this guy gets plus one. And remember, both these guys have a wound on them from Thalen. So when we attack, we only need to put two damage on him. So he's got one defense, we're attacking for three. That's two damage on both of these guys discard the odd okay let's reboot 
And of course he gets another card because of Bilbo. Aha, we finally have Stuart of Gondor, about time. Oh, and remember, we actually, this guy here was actually destroyed. He wasn't just discarded. So we get one extra token from Orna Gondor. So I think what I'm going to do here is one, two, three, four. And I'm going to place another a health bucket underneath Gimli. And that's going to give him a massive amount of health because he actually starts with five. So he now has nine health. Yablamo, uh, nine, not eight. And he's already got four wounds. That means he can now quest without fear of dying. Okay, over here, we're going to spend one and place our Song of Kings onto Thalen. And then we're going to spend one, two, and do Stand and Fight. Now, Standard Fight allows us to choose, choose an ally with a printed cost of X and any player's discard and put that ally into play under our control. And we're going to just grab this guy and place him on this side of the table. And that gives us a nice chunky four defense. Now, we do have a tactic song in here somewhere. And once we get that, we'll be able to keep this guy around permanently. So we don't want to use this guy unless we have to. Still, let's go your blammo, your blammo, your blammo, your blammo, your blammo, and your blammo, your blammo. And that gives us plus four. This guy gets a token, this guy gets a token, and this guy gets a token from the tracker. This guy now has three. And because it's a bank of Anduin, it actually goes straight into the top of the deck, which means it's going to come out this turn. Then we go one, year two, deal one damage to each character controlled by each player with 35 or higher. I should, oh, I completely forgot about that. So, he gets a wound, he gets a wound, he gets a wound, which would have killed him like we put out the health, and he gets a wound. And you blam, and now we have one wound on each character who is tapped. You're not supposed to be tapped. Why are you tapped? So that's wound, 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 and wound. Like I said, this deck is a little bit susceptible to treacheries. Now, I know I had him tapped, but I definitely wasn't supposed to have him tapped because I always have him ready to you know, attack into the staging area twice. Okay, so that was a pretty harsh turn. How many of those have we gone through? There's three of them. We've only, okay, we've had two Necromancer's Passes, and I think there's two of these guys. We've only had one. So we still have to worry about the treacheries. Okay, so bam and draw. And this guy gets a second card because he of, you know, because of Bilbo. Nice. And we actually have a Rivendell Mintral now. So we are going to definitely go one, two, three, though, and discard another greeting. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to save us from most of the threats. Then over here... We're going to go one, two off our leadership guy and place out Horn of Gondor. And we're going to stick that on Bilbo, tap it and give him two health. I mean, two resources. And this guy is actually killed, by the way. Did I forget to calculate quest power last turn? I did. So what did I quest for? This guy, he died. I quested for him, 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 and him. That was two. Place two progress tokens. 
those two progress tokens were placed by yeah so I think I forgot to play I always forget to place the progress tokens I'm just going to put another two because I'm pretty sure I forgot to and I'm going to leave it questing like this so we're still questing for nine we get one token put here and one token placed on either of those but look at them they both only have two health so both of these are discarded and we go one two three this guy says we place two damage on a currently questing character and i'm gonna place he's got two wounds he's got six seven eight so place two wounds on him and now he has eight wounds and nine health which incidentally gives him 10 attack crazy <laughs> okay so i am then going to attack with done here and that kills this guy outright Man, that uh, brown lands is east blight has really slowed us down. So let's draw. And remember, this guy gets a second card because of whatever it's called. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and place out land revolve. I'll show you him in action a bit later. And over here, I'm going to tap you, get two resources. And I'm going to go one, two, three, and place out Rivendell Minstrel. Now, the Minstrel is basically just a tutor. So we're going to tutor for a song. And we're grabbing Song of Battle. Which I am then going to spend one and place on you let's have a quick look here man we're in a lot of trouble so we can no longer quest with Gimli or well, I guess we can we can just let this guy save him because after a hero card is destroyed return it to the owner's hand put this guy back into play with one damage on him so that's still pretty good so I'm going to go bam, bam, he's got two wounds, bam, bam, okay. We're now 10. We've got all these cards out here. This guy gets a token. He gets a token. He gets a token. And it's one. Each enemy in location gets plus one. one. So that's one, two, three. Your blam and your blam. Deal one damage to each person 35 or higher. No one is 35 or higher, so that whiffs. And we are plus zero. I'm going to discard the Song of Wisdom to fuel Eowyn's ability to give a plus one. So we are now actually 11, so we're plus one. So you'll. Now, I'm going to draw this guy down here and I'm going to block with this bloke who has four defense. He gets two cards. They both do nothing. Attacking for three, defending at four, and then we attack for six and <laughs> attack for... <laughs> The attack for 13 that uh, kind of kills him and that gives us plus two 
progress tokens because of Legolas. So that is one, two. And this guy is discarded. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is a definitely an error. Okay, that's another error in the mod I need to fix. Let's redraw. And we get plus one because of Bilbo. And we finally get our healer. Excellent. So let's tap you. One, two. I'm going to go one, two, three. And place out you. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Using Tomb to recast Gagnol's Greeting. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Then it is quest, 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 quest. Oh wait, I haven't actually done this guy's turn, have I? No. So he's going to go one, two, three, and place out support of the eagles. And we're going to place that on this guy as well. Now, support of the Eagles, I'll show you that when, it, when the time comes, but it's a very strong card and it needs to be played in a tactics hero. But of course, Song of Battle gives him that resource. Okay, so that's a total of requesting for 10. Why are we requesting so low? Oh, that's right. This guy gets a resource. This guy gets a resource, and this guy gets a resource. This is the Banks of the Anduin, which now has three on it. So it gets discarded, but it goes on top of the deck. And we just go uh, one, two, three. Okay, so two damage to someone questing. Let's go one, two. And then this one, each location gets plus one. So there's three locations, one, two, three. And then everyone 35 or higher chooses and discards a card. No one's 35 or higher. We're gonna have this guy attack. Defend. Oops, flip this one, I mean. He's attacking for two. He's defending at four. We attack with these guys to obliterate him and place two progress tokens. Seven total. So I'm going to do that and clear two wounds off Gimli. And draw another card because of, oops, sorry. This is the first player. So we draw another card here. Oh, we finally get an eagle, a bit late. So Eagles of Misty Mountains allows us to search the top five cards of our deck and pick one and any eagles we find we get to put in our hand so that's one two and this card here which is what we cast actually has the eagle trait so we can get that into our hand as well that was a nice rich draw and it does allow us to cast it straight away so let's do another one and we get more eagles and we get another card that's beautiful turn and shuffle and because we've got the third eagle card, we can do it again. You blam. No eagles that time. Okay. So I'm going to go one, place out you. And I'm going to go, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Meanwhile, over here, 
tap, we get two resources. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and place another tomb to cast Gladwell's Greeting again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to go quest, 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 quest. Okay. And we go one. Oh wait, before we do that, these guys all get tokens. So that's a token, that's a token, and that's a token. This is the Banks of the Udian. It's got three on it, so it uh, gets put straight back onto the top of the deck. This one would have been on the top of the deck. And this goes on the top of the deck. This one actually has victory points and we discard it because it's got three tokens. So this one goes into the victory display. Into the victory display. Looks like, oh, look, I haven't written the victory levels on this. So it's three points, I think. And then we draw three cards. One, two, that gets put into the discard into that gets killed by Thalen and three. Remove four progress points. One, two, three, four. And we're plus eight. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're at eleven progress. Okay, let's tap you, and I'm going to clear two wounds off Gimli, and that removes two attack, not that he really cares about that, but now we can quest with him without worrying about him dying, and let's refresh, draw a card. This guy gets to draw a second card because of his first player and Bilbo being crazy, 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 crazy powerful. Okay, let's tap you, get two resources and let's go one, two, three, four, replace Bam. And bam. Actually, we'll put one here. Why not? Okay, quest, 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 quest. We're going to quest with Gimli this time, and as well as Thalen. We get one token, one token, draw three, one. Each location gets plus one and anyone over 35 threat. So there's no one over 35 threat. Booyah, nice. And your blammo. Okay, so we're still plus two. So that's one, two, we're at 13. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to discard. We're going to discard this card, which is a fast hitch to add plus one with Aowen, which means we get one more token. And we're now at 14. And that means that we'll just discard this. We need 16 to win, and Legolas, we know, places two progress tokens. So there's a couple of things we want to do here. Firstly, this guy attacks for nine. Is that right? So he's got seven. Yeah. 
So this guy actually has a wound on him, by the way, not that it matters. And so does this guy, not that it matters. So what we're gonna do here is be super tricky. Now, this guy is the first player. So we're gonna bring this down into here. And I think I'm gonna leave it like that. So um, oh, I guess I could bring this guy down in here. Now I'm gonna bring this guy down into here and just leave him like that. Then I'm going to defend versus this bloke, your blammo. Oh, wow, the hill troll, excellent. We didn't get have to deal with that at the end game. Yoink. This guy's attacking for two, this guy's defending at four. Let's actually spend one resource off our tactics so we keep him around. No damage, and then we're attacking for two. This guy, Actually, let's not attack for two. We're just going to attack using Legolas, your Bamo, for three. Okay, which is enough to kill him. Boom. And then we get to place two progress tokens. And the important thing is that we've now finished the combat, uh, finished this quest outside of the quest phase, but still inside this guy's combat phase. So, like, if we drew that card down to here and fought, then this guy's combat phase would have already been and gone. In fact, I'm also going to, uh, just to uh, amend that, I'm also going to attack with this guy just for fun, just so he's discarded, not because we want him to add damage, but just because it's going to add another combat token and defense token to this guy which will be very important in the coming phase. So he had uh, range, right? So this guy has range, so he attacked with Legolas. So he attacked that guy for six. Okay, so now that that is all done, uh, I should probably do it like that, just in case more Necromancer's passes come out. We get to clear this thing, your wink. Oops, put it in the, let's put it in the bin. The ongoing harassment of your enemies has forced the raft to the shore and you must now confront their ambush head on. If you survive this attack, the path to the golden wood should be open before you. Zero progress tokens. When revealed, reveal two encounter cards per player, add them to the staging area, and this is the great bit. Skip the staging quest. So whatever comes out now is all we have to deal with for the rest of the game. So usually if you get to 3B, you've basically won. It can sometimes if you do it during the quest phase, they all attack you and it can be difficult. But it's such a great themed game. So we start off running out of Mirkwood Forest. We run down to the river being chased. Then we kill the troll, jump on the boat. And then because we're in the middle of the boat, we can't actually be fought by anyone. They're just like following along the riverbanks and we're picking them off as we can. And then we land at the riverbanks and they all ambush us. It's so great, I love this quest. Anyway, so we draw two cards per player. So that's one, two, deal one damage to each controller 35 or higher. No one is 35 or higher. One, surge, surge, and blam. There we go, so that is one, two, surge, surge, blam. Okay, so this one gets discarded. And now we have to deal with these things. But remember, we've still got two attacks with done, done here. Now, none of these actually have wounds on them because it's outside the quest phase. So uh, what's the name's ability doesn't trigger. But we're gonna attack for three into the staging area. That will kill this bloke. And then we are going to attack for three into the staging area, but we're also going to tap support of the eagles. Exhaust support of the eagles to choose an eagle ally. Until the end of the phase, attach hero adds that ally's attack or defense. So your bamo, and we add this guy's attack, which is five attack, plus the two attack, 
and the plus ones, so that's three attacks. So he is actually attacking for eight. And we're going to use that to attack this bloke. He only needs eight to kill him, so the wound doesn't matter. And he is dead. Nice. And now it's the next turn. Yablamo and Yablamo. Okay. So we only need to produce seven, seven will here because there's nothing else coming out of the encounter deck and we don't need to place tokens. So let's go four. Uh, five, six. May as well just go tap. One, two. Probably should, uh, this guy gets an extra card because he's the first player. So I'm getting excited because we're right at the end of the game. Okay. Well, we can go one, two, three, four, and go Descendant of Thorindor. Place two wounds on this guy and just kill him outright. And we'll go one, two, three, three, uh, three, four, and place out Beekeeper, which we then discard to put one damage to everyone in the staging area. And that will put one damage on you. And then over here, let's just go spend one resource and do quick strike, action, exhaust a character you control to immediately declare it as an attacker, resolve its attack. Boom, we're attacking the staging area for three. This guy's got one wound on him, so he gets two wounds and that kills him as well. Bam, and now it says once there are no enemies in play, the players have won the game. So bam, game over. So that was pretty easy. Nice nice to finish up, nice way to finish up. Uh, I kind of miss having the, uh, do, do I actually have any of those bouncing cards in here? I don't. I don't know why I've got Descendant of Thorndor, but I don't have the bouncing cards. We don't need these Duradane warnings at all. They're basically designed to go on Frodo in case Frodo needs to do defending and we can untap him with uh, these hitches to multiple defends. But using stand and fight to bring the guardians over to this side of the table works much better. So I'll do a little bit of a tweak of this deck. We'll take out the warnings and we'll uh, may maybe even take out the hitches and put back in the bounce cards that allows us to get these things back into our hand. But whatever, the point is game over. Now, what I've been doing is for each quest, right, that I've been doing on the internet, I've got a deck box with those, that, those decks in it. And I name them from whatever people who watch the videos write. So, this one here, uh, I don't know where it's actual. Ah, here it is. So this deck here, Hook Quest, Hook Then Quest, which uh, is a weird name by one of uh, the guys watching the videos, is this deck, which is slightly weaker than the Falconer's Duck Hunt, which is another really cool quest, uh, cool deck. And I think that's about that. I will see you guys next time. I've all, I've pretty much finished the the mod. There's a few adjustments I need to do. I basically every time I play I have a little list of things I need to fix. I need to I think I need to move this bin because sometimes the quest tokens will get like instead of dropping in the bin they'll drop onto the quest. So I'm going to move this bin down here. And I need to change it so when you do refreshes, cards that are flipped over actually will not flip up. And apart from that, it's pretty robust at the moment, the, the, the mod. So I might even do a release pretty soon. I'll release the, because I've done the three core set quests and I've got the player cards for the whole Merkwood cycle. 
episode that's ready to play the first three quests. Anyway, I will see you guys next time.